Hi, and welcome back to the Harry and Marcus podcast, where this week we're going to go over just basically some of our vinyl purchases, the last five that I brought and the last five that Marcus brought. Um, talk about them and uh, why we brought them and maybe a bit of information and uh, take it from there. So do you want to kick off? Yeah, OK, then. Uh, my first one is uh, I've bought quite a few, so uh, it's just sticking my hand in and picking out some. So uh, first one was Adrian Gervitz. Uh, classic. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, got got to number eight, num- number eight in uh, uh, nineteen eighty two. Got a nice copy of this in on a in the uh, picture sleeve, and it's part of my Drac uh, uh, collection. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's like most of mine are all to do with some sort of a uh, uh, collection, but uh, not a. Uh, don't know what you think. You you probably liked it. I I guess not. Not really my no cup of tea. Uh, but if you've got to collect, you've got to collect. Uh, but I, uh, the other record I have, uh, buying from the past is uh, Gun Race with of uh, no, the Devil. I didn't. I, uh, I wasn't over there. I mean, um, classic it's wasn't one him, of my him and his brother Paul Gervitz played on that. I never knew they were in Gun. No. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't a massive fan of the song when it came out. I didn't hate it, but I didn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Have, I didn't. Wouldn't have rushed out and brought it. I don't think. Uh, I don't think at that point in time. I was buying as many records as I was in the seventies. I don't think I no, bought them. Same here. Same same here. It's taken me forty forty one years to buy it. Yeah. yeah. He's me. also later on is in <coughs> the Baker Gervitz Army. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. straight after Gun he was in a in a band that sort of came out of Gun called a Free Man Army. Again, uh, uh, with his uh, uh, brother Paul. I'm trying to think. If I, yeah. He's one of those artists that I don't actually know anything about him. Mm. Um, you're, you're just telling me all this information I knew nothing about. I'm surprised you didn't know he was in Gun. I mean, I know the Gun record uh, yeah. really well, and I've, I know that it's the, him uh, singing it. Of... It's him singing it? it. Yeah, and playing and I know, and I know of the. Uh, the Baker Gervis Army, but uh, I'm just looking him up as we're talking. Are you still alive? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Age 73. Yeah. That makes a change. Uh, <laughs> some, we're, we're talking about someone who's still alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but uh, according to this, uh, he's still recording as well. Although his last, uh, yeah. his last album was in uh, 2000. Oh, no, in 2011, he produced uh, Pixie Lot. But, uh, oh, cool. oh. but uh but he certainly played with some interest he play, played with another buddy miles band and stuff oh, right, yeah. i i noticed uh but out of uh no interest to anybody apart from me this is my 106th uh, rack single but 106 rack singles yeah bloody hell i thought you i thought you had about 50 no 106 mate they had a lot of hits. Oh, yeah, a yeah. A lot of hits, Harry. <laughs> yeah, it did indeed. I mean, the 70s, it was, uh, what, Susie Quattro, Mud, uh, Smokey, they had loads of them, didn't they? Hot Chocolate. Yeah, All these yeah, big yeah. bands that had loads of hits. Exile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, so I'm trying to be clever now. I'm trying to think of an obscure rack act, but I can't. Not that I had a hit, I mean, I, mean, I could think yeah. of so Racy. Uh, Oh, Racy, yeah, yeah. Got now, talking of Racy, didn't you, oh. do you think that "Lay Your Love on Me" could have easily been a mud single if it was written a couple of years earlier? It just sounds to me like it's got mud written all over it. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, because it's Chin Chapman, and because uh, of the sort of, it just sounds like it's sort of like they were trying to create a mud for the late seventies. Mm. You can just imagine Les Gray singing it and uh, the sort of the, the bouncy 
tune and everything else. It's just, uh, yeah, I just heard it the other day. It just came on. I, I used one of those random playlists on Spotify and it popped up, but I hadn't heard it for ages. And it just, I just thought this sounds like it could have easily been a mud sink, but it might just be me, my take on it. Anyway, I've, I've diversed yeah. from Adrian. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, so anything else you'd like to say, man? I'm just going to quick look down. No, that's it, really. I'm just a uh, short, short, uh, sweet things, you know. Uh, uh, about it, I'm uh, I'm up around my uh, fourth thousandth top twenty single. All oh, right, right. At, at no moment, nearly at that, and down to about needing seven hundred ish to complete it. Then you're going to be at a loss to what to collect next. All the top fifty albums for the last fifty years. No, no, I think I'm I'm really well. I say I'm I'm uh, uh, not going to to rush after it. Then you saw if you saw the amount of records I ordered last night when I was bored. Yeah, it's not yeah, really you, not really the thing to do, is it? Are you still uh, going through your Beatles phase, or are you moving on a bit? Uh, no, we're uh, going back to uh, top twenty top twenty right. singles. Beatles, I'll leave that for a special show because I've got to. It's uh, when you're doing different uh, press pressings and uh, you know, and the uh, con- contract presses and and you now stuff uh, gets awkward to know uh, which one is is what. So I'm I'm doing cards for them. but that's uh, for for another show perhaps. Anyway. What's your and, first one, then? I was just going to say, as a last thing, I just noticed what I looked. I just looked up at the screen, and it just jumped out at me. In two thousand, Gavitz formed an American pop girl group called No Secrets, and they released uh, Kids in America, which peaked at number one in the Billboard Heatseekers chart. Oh right, never heard it, but uh, mm. another song. Right, my first one is the. Oldest one in the five I've brought. I mean, I haven't probably been buying as much as you recently. Um, uh, it's as long as you're Still, happy. Promo. Getting Sophie some Shaw. good. Uh, oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. That's her first single? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, uh, I can't afford to buy. Well, the, the copies that I saw that weren't promos were in the hundreds of pounds. And this cost me, as you know, I can't remember what it cost me. Was it, was it 20 or 30? But it was, it was a quite a good price for considering it's her first single in a promo. Written by Chris Andrews, as was the B-side, Ya Ya Da Da, which I haven't played. Um, the uh, it's I played it. Oh, I played it on Spotify to be honest. I didn't play the single. I, I must play the single to see it, make sure mm. it plays okay. But uh, it sounds very sort of Sandy sixties, Chris Andrews. Uh, and as you know, I collect Sandy, so uh, I don't know exactly how many of hers I've got at the moment or how many I need. Um, I can soon tell you by uh, clicking on a little click here. Which will open my little sandy page. But uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm oh, sorry, I've better go what I need. Uh, need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Need about eighteen, twenty still. I mean, that's going right into the eighties. Yeah. But um, it's the seventies ones that are. Uh, you know, like White is White and By Tomorrow and, and uh, no, White is White, yeah, 1970, yeah. Um, By Tomorrow, uh, reviewing this situation is going to be the one that's going to be impossible to get. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's always one. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, good single, and I was really happy to get it on promo. Um, part of my Sandy Shaw collection. Uh, How many do do you do you have? Uh, I'd have to count them, hang on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, including EPs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eight, nine. 33. How many? 33. Oh, wow. I have 18. Um, but I, uh, I'm, lo- I'm watching... Uh, I'm watching. I'm watching one of our EPs at the moment. Um, I'm just trying to see. Uh... Does that include LPs? Oh, under, uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, sorry, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't distinguish between LPs. It's probably about well, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six LPs in there. Yeah, so, right. Okay. Yeah. 
but it doesn't uh, seem so bad then i just couldn't believe i was that far out with singles but yeah. um no i can't remember i can't remember what, what, what ep i'm watching but i think it's um as he runs his eyes down tell the boys ep but i'm not i'm not 100 percent. Sure. I, i've got that i'm watching it. it's 15 pounds by it now yeah but anyway, back to uh, as long as you're happy, baby. Yeah, I'm quite happy. I'm I'm quite happy that I got it. Uh, it's a good single, and it's in quite. I'm just looking at it now. It covers a little bit tatty, but it's a proper pie original pie sleeve. Yeah. Although I don't think it's meant to be in an original pie sleeve, but the actual single's in very good nick considering how old it is. It's got one yeah. little nick on the uh, A side and no marks on the B side. So yeah, I'm quite happy. Uh, so what's your number two choice? My next one is. Uh... The, the Stranglers. All oh, right, yeah. About five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Got uh, got to number 11 in uh, 1978 on United Artists again. And it was their uh, fifth of official single. Uh, they had a freebie single they gave out as a gig. Which is on the list, but it's not a f- official, obviously. But uh, you know, from uh, get get a grip. I mean, we're all big fans, weren't we? Back in the day, we saw them, didn't we? At at, at no, the Nashville. Yeah, we did indeed. Yeah, back in the that day. That was the one you got your your belt nicked off your coat with it. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, going to a punk gig wearing a trench coat was obviously with long hair was was really cool i was making a statement yeah yeah <laughs> and they and they pinched my belt just to teach me a lesson well, at least they didn't try and hang you with it or whip you with it or anything so uh <laughs> but i do remember standing at the back because we didn't want to get covered in spit yeah who was the support band is that girl singer she did moany moany oh um i know who you mean but i've forgotten her name i i I uh, used to to have uh, uh, the single. It's a name and V is 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 is, and it's quite quite a good version, if I recall. But um, I'm just saying. Uh, um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I I put in Moni Moni, and then I put in 1978 to see if it came up with a. Uh, and it came up with apparently Flintlock released it in 1978. Oh wow! Oh. <laughs> Which uh, is um, well, perhaps Derek was in track. Yeah, 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 yeah. Derek yeah, could have been a, in track. That's a version. In fact, the the top one, two, three, foot, the top uh, eight um, things are Flintlock. It's not. <laughs> it's like uh, obviously Flintlock's version has had a lot of searches. Yeah. Um, only only second hand songs, I don't know. That's no good. So, um, sorry, let's go back to the Stranglers. Yeah, we were both uh, big, uh, big fans of uh, the Stranglers, and yeah, as you say, saw them live, liked all their early records. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, if there was anything I didn't like in the early days by them. I don't think there was, no. Um, I think, although it was a massive, massive hit, I. I wasn't overly fond of Golden Brown. It was it was okay, but it wasn't like I suppose I didn't I, I preferred their faster sort of more punky stuff. No, oh, it's good. For, well, like 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 all uh, the early singles, but didn't particularly like you know, the later ones. I, I I think going up to sort of uh, uh, up to Walk On By and stuff like that were all you know good records and then. I didn't really buy much after that, to be to be honest. No, no. Uh, don't know about yeah, that. Walk on yeah, by but they yeah. were great. At the, you know, get a grip. Peaches, oh, get a grip and peaches, and, and that they were great. Yeah. Uh, go, buddy, go was my favourite. I remember listening to hearing "Go, buddy, go" when we were. I can't remember if we were on Richmond Green or on the green part of the. Uh, by the River Thames next to that pub that used to be on the uh, going up towards the top of the hill 
and someone, one of us must have had a radio because I remember sitting under a tree listening to Go Buddy Go, but I can't mm. remember where we were. But it always brings back memories of that uh, hot summer day in that in the seventies. Wish I was back there now. Just before mind. you do this, just going back to Gracie and yeah. uh, Drac. Uh, do you remember their song Kitty? I know the name, but I don't remember it. Right, because that. Uh, that that became a uh, Mickey. Oh right, right, right. So they they, said, they uh, wrote no, no, the Tony no, Basil, the, story, yeah. the Tony Basil song. Yeah. No, you said it. I knew someone else. But it's exactly it, but... the same, apart from the word Kitty. That, that doesn't quite have. Uh... Oh, it's uh, it's it's an interesting thing to listen to. So, I'll, I'll have a listen yeah. to that after we've uh, finished recording. Yeah. My next one is the first of two Linda Lewis. In fact, I had two come the same day. Um, oh, cool. Um, it's in his kiss and this one. Remember the days of the old school yards. Remember, the reason I've uh, chosen this one is because it's a promo. Demo record, not for sale, and written by Cat Stevens and produced yeah. by Jim Cregan. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, great song. Um, as you said in our show that uh, about Linda, Cat didn't like the version. I, I quite liked her version, and I liked his version. Um, I um, hang on, wait a minute. Right, I'm sorry again. Yeah, I quite liked uh, her version, and I quite liked his version. Um, I uh, I'm trying to think. If I, it's really, really difficult to sort of sort of say something about a song that. You sort of 1974 song that you really like, but I can't, I don't actually have any memories of it from 1974. I remember it coming out, but there's nothing particular in 74 that happened that reminds me of it. Um, I certainly remember hear, hearing it on the, the great radio because uh, obviously after her first single, you keep keep keeping an ear out for for uh, new records because you were. Uh, you you liked the uh, first hit single, so I certainly yeah. uh, re, re, remember it. Uh, I, I imagine Cat Stevens didn't like the version because it's a, a lot more poppy than his 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 version. Yeah. Uh, now the mix and now stuff is uh, not really like anything he he was doing. No, no, then uh, I suppose because he wrote it for her. Uh, he had a he had, he was imagining how, how she'd have done it, but uh, I, I I think as we discussed in our show, uh, she was uh, clearly quite a nice nice strong uh, uh, woman, weren't she? And she if she she thought it was better to record it that way, she'd have done that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. She wrote the the B side, Chord and Blues, and my copy is. Not a mark on it, which is, and it's in a plain oh, white cool. sleeve, which, as uh, you said, is correct for the, the Bell uh, promos. Um, and, yeah, that's my second choice. So you're, oh, um, <laughs> I've just looked on uh, Discogs, uh, 20 for sale from 70p. So it's not, it's not a, uh, a hugely expensive place to buy. Hello, <laughs> getting, getting your, uh, getting your, um, your voice heard again in yet another show. What's your next, yeah. uh, your next one? Right, my uh, uh, my uh, next one is the uh, new, new beats of uh, uh, bread and bread and butter. Oh yeah, yeah, which yeah. Got to number fifteen in nineteen sixty four in the UK. I think got to number two on the the bill bill billboard chart. All right, uh, yeah. They're a band from. Uh, LA, uh, and it was on the Hickory uh, uh, record la- label, which was uh, distributed by uh, Pi uh, over here. But I think Hickory Records was from Tennessee. I think it says that on, uh, thankfully, the uh, original Hickory sleeve I've got. Oh, right, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Which is, um, uh, is that uh, the one I saw quite... the other day that I said I'd never seen before? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it's the only, the only Hickory hit single in, in the the UK uh, uh, 
who was novice. Uh, so did a, a, a bit of research on them by the uh, the Ed Mathis brothers. No, 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 no relation. Uh, Dean and M- Mark uh, Mathis, and the not, other not Johnny and Jimbo. No, <laughs> and the other uh, then was uh, 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 Larry Hanley. Uh, I saw a, a clip of him now doing it, which was uh, as per normal. Uh, back in the sixties, uh, I all looked like college grads. Uh, do you know, do doing the singing and no, no, the dancing. Uh, interesting. Uh, 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 well, they they split up finally in. Uh, uh, 1974 and didn't do much but Larry Hanley was a a songwriter and later on he he wrote uh, The the Wind Beneath My Wings Oh right yeah yeah. It's quite uh, well known I'd I don't know, I'll take it, Ed, Ed Westlife must have recorded that. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like did. a sort of song they did. They did, definitely did, yeah. 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 I just yeah. Uh, had a quick, you know, because I know nothing about the song Bread and Butter, so I just quickly had a look on there while you were talking, and uh, anything I could see on it that you haven't mentioned about being re-recorded by Devo? Devo or Devo? Devo. Devo. D-E-V-O, yeah, Devo. Yeah. Not not heard that, but I imagine uh, there'll be quite a different version going by their version of uh, Satisfaction, which yeah, was, yeah. A, was a great version. But um, apparently Debo recorded it for a film, uh, but I can't see what film it was now. I saw it a minute ago, but weren't, um, but uh, whatever it was, it's a film. I don't know if it was released by Debo as a single. But uh, yeah, it's a good song. I, yeah. I like it. I like Bread and Butter. Um, yes, I'm so, here. I, I'm, I'm quite keen for a slice of the uh, bread and butter by, by, by my dinner, particularly if it's fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. as the song says, I do actually prefer toast and jam. Hmm. And my next one hmm. is one I yeah. can't even remember if I told you that I brought, but um, uh-huh. I did. Face It Alone by Queen. Ah, oh, right. Great. I, I'd like Queen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, I wasn't going to buy it, and then I watched. The what on earth is it? It is was it, re- uh... it, it was recorded for the Miracle album and not used, and for thirty years um, considered unsalvage- unsalvageable until modern technology came along, and then they announced in October last year oh, that they oh, could uh, they could salvage it, and they released it. In, uh, they released it on the thirteenth of October. And with along with a video with you know an old old clips of Freddie and everything, um, and it's it's actually really good. It's a classic Queen from the Miracle era, and it sounds like a, it could have been on the Miracle album. And I really liked it when I saw the video, so I thought, why not? So I looked, looked for a copy on eBay, and everyone wanted thirty or forty quid for it, and I found one with five minutes to go for fourteen pound, and I got it. Oh, well um, done, excellent. Uh, Was it cold to, again? Face it alone. All um, oh, right. Apparently, you know, you're getting everyone reading into it. All these people are doing reviews of the single on their review, and because it's uh, about the lyrics are basically going, um, basically whatever happens in your life, in the end, you've got to face it alone. So they're all saying around the time of the Miracle album is when the time he found he had AIDS. So he's no, no one's ever officially said that this is what it's about, but everyone's assuming that Freddie wrote the lyrics because he uh, he knew he had to face it alone. But I don't buy into that personally. Um, I think it's just very convenient, you know, the very oh, amount. That sort of statement can fit in a whole load of things. It can be an actual thing that you believe in uh, uh, life, life anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't have to be to your current situation. But, uh, OK. Um, I'm just looking at the chart it, performance. Was this a picture sleeve? Picture sleeve, yeah, from the Miracle uh, era. And the B-side is just a picture of Freddie. I mean, mine's still sealed, not opened. Uh, I, I'm decide- I, I'm, I keep going through these uh, 
period is where I think I'm going to open it and play it. And then I think, well, why do I need to play it? I, mean, I can just watch the video on YouTube. And you intend to, to sell it? No. So I might so. as well play it, yeah. But looking at uh, the um, critical reception was not bad. Four out of five stars in my magazine. Three out of five for another. Most people praising uh, Mercury's vocals. But critically... Um, it became the most downloaded song in the world for five days in a row and topped the iTunes download charts in 21 countries. And in hard copies, in, um, in the actual hard, you know, like seven-inch vinyl charts for 2022, it was the fourth length best-selling sing single, one behind Brilliant Adventure by Bowie and one ahead of Rock the Casbah by The Clash, which does oh. surprise me that Rock the Casbah was selling on vinyl last year. But there we go. It obviously was. Cool. Um, yeah, but I like it. I think it's a great single and it's Classic Queen and I quite like Classic Queen. So, uh, yeah. What's your next one? Right, I'm uh, being a bit no cheeky here because it's actually f three singles. All oh, right. But I'm doing it under one. Uh, it's for Shang Shangri-La's leader of the, the pack. Oh, right, I recently right, right. bought three copies. Yeah, I remember you telling me, yeah. Bit, yeah. I've got the the Redbird copy from 1965. I've got the Contempo version from 1975. And I also bought the Charlie version from 1976. And I already had, which isn't included here, the Kama Sutra copy from 19. 72 yeah yeah uh i've got the charlie and the contempo ones because those sales for those ones were combined in uh, uh, 1976 to help it get to to num number seven in the charts uh, the song was written by george shadow morton uh, who actually pr produced it as well, and and their first single, "Remember," wal wal walking in the the, the sand, and uh, the main writers really were were Jeff Barry and Ellie Ellie Greenwich. Uh, lot lot of lot of info uh, uh, about it was where it's recorded. Uh, supposedly, a uh, a. Uh, uh, Billy Joel played s session piano on some of the uh, outtakes, but uh, he didn't make it on to uh, the, uh, the, the 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 final version, which is someone called Rossi played piano on it. Not 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 not, no, uh, no. not Francis Rossi, yeah. but uh, someone, someone called. Ud, Ud, that Rossi played play piano on it, so uh, yeah, uh, a great single, but uh, obviously not not to have not so great that I had to have four copies. It's only because it was a hit so many times, so uh, that, yeah. that's a reason. Yeah. But yeah, it's a nice it. array. You've got the the red bird is the first one in a. I've got that in a, a red bird sleeve. Which is nice. Uh, I've got the Kama Sutra sleeve, and that, that's a nice lay, lay, label. Uh, and I'm still working on the Charlie and Contempo sleeves. Uh, I think the Charlie sleeve was in, was plain white, but uh, I'm still still uh, 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 researching that. So uh, anyway, it's a uh, Nice, nice one, Swev, and I'll uh, we'll post the pictures of these in in time for people to see. Yeah, we will indeed. And now we're on to my fourth choice, which is well, it's actually changed because it was originally going to be Linda Lewis's second. Because I did say earlier there were two Linda Lewis, and it was going to be um, the album "Not a Little Girl Anymore." Then I realised that the last record I actually brought, we're doing last albums. Were, uh, was actually last Saturday, as you know, you were with me, and it was uh, the Rubettes album, We Can Do yeah. It. Now, very I, impressed. I was really lucky to get for, for £4 with a 
immaculate uh, inner sleeve mm. that looks like it's never been read and an immaculate yeah. uh, album that looks like it's never been played when you consider yeah you this consider the what, tracks on it well i was going to say when you consider that this is one of the albums of the 70s dave gilmore played on it um, jimmy page freddie mercury <laughs> did backing vocals it's uh it's one of the albums to own in from the 70s and it has two amazingly uh catchy singles on it i can do it yeah. and uh and their their blue uh, oh, did you hear about Joe? their blue clothes look pretty cool on the cover too they all yeah, wear well, caps or is or is it just uh, yeah all, all wearing all wearing caps all wearing blue suits and the back of the album's in blue as well to match their suits yeah, and cool. incredibly tacky there's a picture of them on the back all in like a stately home, dressed in different clothing, but with a framed picture of them in the blue suits from the front uh, cover on the wall. Is a bass player eating toast? Uh, no. no I, I, I remember his claim in a record mirror, I think back in the 70s, that he only ate toast. I remember you saying about that, yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at the back of the... Um, the album, and I already made that mistake on Saturday of thinking that The Family Affair was the Slime Family Stone one, which it obviously isn't when you read the lyrics. But they've <laughs> also got a track on there called Don't Do It, Baby. I'm just going to look at the lyrics to see if it's the Mac and Katie Kassane one. Did Be- 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 get it right. Dickerson and Waddington write for Mac and Katie Kassane because they wrote the whole of this album, or virtually the whole of this album. I've got no idea, but it's certainly... It got, is the same uh, one. I'm just looking at the lyrics. Got, uh, a Drew Betts feel to it. Yeah, I'm just looking at the lyrics. It is the same one. Yeah. Don't do it, baby. Don't let this eardrop start. So, uh, who was it I was looking at an album? I know you said the other day about, uh, well, I was sitting the other day earlier, about um, the Mickey uh, song. Being, yeah. And I, I remember having an album by someone else, another, it was by Kenny, and there was a, there was a track on it that was done by someone else um, as a big hit for someone else. Or was it a Mad album? It was like, no, it was a Mad album. They had a version of Under the Moon of Love on it, which obviously became a, a oh, right. hit for Shiwadi Wadi. But um, both Mad and Shiwadi Wadi liked doing the old rock and roll songs. But, uh, yeah, yeah, this is okay. I mean, I collect... You played it, yeah. But we can do it. I played the singles. I played oh. uh, I Can Do It, and I played... That's a surprise. Uh, Jukebox Jive. Yeah, you, 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 I you don't ser- have to, of course, because I've got the singles. But did you seriously think I was going to sit for a whole side of uh, the through beds? I'll, I might play a couple more tracks. Just so you're that, saying to the vinyl community that you buy records and you basically just store them a, a, a way? Uh, I think that, you know that old saying about greenhouse, greenhouses and throwing stones? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think this might well be a case of you doing that because I do believe that you very rarely play your records either. Oh, oh, wash your mouth out. Nonsense. I play every one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and for B sides. I nearly made a massive uh, cock up uh, on air because I looked at uh, We Can Do it on Wikipedia just to see if there was any information about the album, but it basically just says it got to number. Massive, uh, massively, 41 in the UK charts. It's an important top, top five. Um, had two top ten hits on it yeah. and was re-released in, uh, on Dice Records in 1997. And then it says uh, the... Uh, 180 gram? Oh, uh, no, CD. Um, oh. Double CD. They're both the first two albums. Oh, it's got the demos. Got the uh, no, bonus yeah. tracks were When You're Falling In Love and If You've Got The Time, both written by John Richardson and Adam Williams. Um, I do believe, I don't know if they still are, but up until a few years ago, the Rubettes were pretty, still pretty massive in France. Yeah. I do remember reading somewhere that they've got a massive following over there and they still tour over there. But um, I saw that Bill Hurd was the uh, keyboards player for the Rubettes and thought, oh, it wasn't he the keyboards player for Flintlock? And then I looked on and it wasn't. It was Bill someone else that was the keyboard player yeah. for Flintlock. So th- thankfully I looked that up before we... Uh, before we started but anyway this was originally released in march 1975 which was the month of my 18th birthday and to celebrate that i have now now i now own a copy of we can do it in almost pristine condition and we're on to your number uh, is it five or six for you know yeah. whatever yeah 
Yeah, I have to uh, right. My number five. Mine are all singles, although I, I've got a couple of LPs that I did recently. Uh, should perhaps do in our, our, our uh, next show. Although I've got uh, uh, twenty three singles uh, winging their 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 way to me at no the moment. All by the uh, Wurzels. Well. There is some uh, 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 Wurzels in there, I believe. Uh, oh, that's I, lucky, I guess. Very I lucky. don't own, own, own any at uh, no uh, moment, but that should be uh, uh, rectified soon. But my, uh, my next one on the list is uh, Boogie Nights by Heatwave. Oh, great song. Uh, number two hit in uh, uh, 19... 77 released uh i think the 16th of uh, jan 14th of uh, jan jan january uh that month i've got it in the gto sleeve but unfortunately without really checking i've got the uh, blue injection uh record you know a plastic one rather than the paper the paper lay, lay, label. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a drag that I'd rather, where I can, I'd rather get the paper lay, labels. This was was written by uh, uh, Rod uh, Tem- Templeton. Oh, yeah, yeah. Later fame with with my, Michael Jackson. He, he, he wrote loads of uh, his... No big hits, no didn't he? Off of no, no bad and he did indeed. Uh, he he's uh, passed a, a way now. I think two thousand and thirteen or four. Oh, right, he right. died. I think I certainly saw lots of RIPs to him on uh, Cat Forty Five when I was uh, reading up on this. But uh, this was produced by that great. Funk producer of of, of British music, uh, Barry Blue. Oh, did did you know that? I didn't know that. I knew that. Uh, no, no, I'm not getting very close to making a fool of myself. Wasn't he in your right heap? No, don't think so. And what's he got? Didn't he have something to do with your right heap? Or am I just completely missing the point there? I don't know. Did he have something to do with David Byron? Let me quickly just put in Barry Blue, Uriah Heat. Might have produced them later on. I just seem to remember some some somewhere along the line reading something about that, but I'm not sure. Well, anyways, it's a great single, and uh, now two of the records are winging their way towards me, and my two uh, missing Heatwave singles to. Uh, complete my top 20 collection up to 79 oh right right yeah so that, that'll that complete it which will be good too hot to handle and uh do, 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 what's the other one can't remember the, the other one but if you few good singles uh i think my favorite one by me is the the groove line yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah which is good good single but uh yeah that's that my uh my my number five i'm just looking at barry blue and i, I realized where i got the uh <clears throat> the link from he was the bassist in the lineup of a group called spice that featured mick box and david byron and it was the precursor it turned into your right heap after he left. Ah, so he was barry green yeah, back then. Yeah. But what what does surprise me <clears throat> is um, we're sort of like half jokingly saying about that great producer um, Barry Blue. It says he's a prolific songwriter and producer, and there's oh, forty it... worldwide hits, including yeah. Diana Ross, Ceylon D on the Saturdays, The Wanted, Pixie Lot, and many more. Yeah, no, no, I'm uh, he, he's uh, undoubtedly a, a, a good uh, a producer. Uh, I think the gag was more, the joke was more for you because I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I knew you, you didn't realise. Mind you, uh, looking down the list, of these, 
they, at the top of the page, they have put the very biggest names, like Sir Andy. I'm looking down the whole list of the whole 40, but it also includes Matt Monroe, Mel Smith. Oh, Sandy Shaw. You're just, in, just a delusion for her in no, 1976. I'll... So I'll have to end up getting, getting that. Yeah. Um, Akabilki produced in 1972. Oh, well, so he's... Uh, He's been around as old Barry. Yeah, well, remember part of the time he's probably, uh, I guess he was doing work at Pi, so he'd have probably, you know, Sandy, Ackerbilk, stuff like that, he'd have uh, been involved with them anyway, because <coughs> they, were, they were Pi acts. Yeah, so he's been around a lot more than I thought he'd been around, so it's an egg on my face as far as Barry Blue's concerned. And now we go on to my fifth and final choice, which is like uh, your Shangalars, you said it was a bit of a cheat because it was two. I've linked these two together simply because I brought them together. And um, they're Emma Blackery, uh, the albums Villains and Girl in the Box. And, Who? And that's, I knew you were going to say that. Um, mm-hmm. I started following Emma Blackery on YouTube about five years ago because she was like an indie pop artist. And yeah. I just thought her, uh, her songs were quite poppy. And she's, like, built up a following over the years. And uh, she's never had, like, huge mainstream success. The, one of the albums I brought got to number 18 in the charts. But she's um, all her tours sell out. Um, uh, and her singles sort of get in the lower 50. And she also got me into another India I called Dodi. And I brought her album when I was with you, with you about... A year and a half ago, two years ago now, her debut album okay. in um, in um, Twickenham in Eel Pie Records. Oh, right. But, cool. um, the reason I brought these now, I've been meaning to buy an Emma Blackery record for a long time. So I've been listening to her stuff on YouTube and thinking I must get a record by her and it's never getting around to it because it's not. She's one of those artists I've just never ever seen her records in any of the record shops we go to. But I looked her up on eBay. And because she, when she released her album, she released them in coloured vinyl and there were limited releases, the Girl in the Box album sold out pretty quickly off her website about two years ago. And it's now going on eBay for 160 to 180 quid. And it's on yeah. Discogs for 117. And then I just, out of interest, looked on her website about two weeks ago and they'd found a couple of, uh, found five copies of Green, so I brought one for 14.99. They signed. Uh, no, the, the, no, but that one isn't. But the other one I brought with it, I brought it because it, if you brought the two together, you got the second one for twelve ninety nine, and that's in yellow by and then it's signed. Oh, cool. And that go and that goes on eBay for anything between sixty and a hundred at the moment because it's yellow vinyl. Mm-hmm. So going by eBay prices, I've saved myself about two hundred and fifty quid there. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the actual tracks on them, things like uh, I'm looking down them now. Uh, Villains, fake friends, Icarus. I, they're all stuff that I listened to. I've, I heard on eBay. Quite a lot of the stuff on the Girl in the Box album I haven't heard. I've only heard about two of those tracks. But uh, she's changed a lot over the last maybe two to three years. She was very sort of in the pop bracket. And then she um, started living with her bassist, and he's in this sort of like heavy rock band. And I'm guessing his influence, and maybe she was just. Uh, she. Uh, changing that way anyway but she's become much more sort of indie indie pop punk type thing does but, she um, i've not heard her but just one question does she uh, uh, use auto tune no no she's actually made a video about that okay cool i'll uh try it i i don't hate auto tune but I've, i think some people are really lazy yeah, yeah. Use that sometimes. Uh, I mean, Dodie doesn't use it either. There is I a mean, place for it, but you know, not not as much as her, it is now. Her and Dodie made a sing, uh, made a track together on YouTube, which had never been released. But that's what made me look up Dodie. And her music's totally different. It's more sort of almost um, singer songwriter type stuff. Um, but mm. she doesn't use a course issue either. <clears throat> but they're both sort of like artists that aren't massive, but. They sell. They sell out their tours, and they sell out their rec- You know, their records get in the bottom half of the twenty. Their albums, yeah. and, um, of course, as we discussed uh, on our show about uh, Lin- Linda uh, Lewis, and as uh, artificial intelligence told me when I looked it up, uh, chart hits is not a 
uh, automatic reasons for you being a, a top artist. It can be, you know, a big following. It can be respect in other music biz and, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to, uh, to check them out. She has done another album called Magnetized, which uh, got to number 40 in the charts. And that one, <clears throat> I haven't been able to track anywhere. She hasn't got, she sold it out on her website and mm. uh, it's a fortune online. So I just hang around and so I can find it somewhere. But um, okay. that's cool. Interesting. Oh, well, I was keen to hear a, a new artist, as I've told you, I just heard the, the lottery winners for the first oh, yeah, time yeah, yeah. the other week. They're pretty good. She's um, like them. She cited her influences when when she's talking loves things like Blink One Eight Two and Green Day and White Stripes, but she's also a, a massive Taylor Swift fan. She's always talking about Taylor Swift in her videos, but um, that doesn't really reflect in her music. But uh, she <clears throat> she started doing her YouTube videos as comedy sketches, and then 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 introduced her music. And I was sort of watching last night when I was because uh, the albums arrived this week. I was watching her last night, and I was thinking, I wonder if. YouTube would been around when we were playing. If we'd have sort of taken her route and promoted our music on YouTube and tried to build a following up or not, our I'd drummer like would, would certainly have been pushing us uh, uh, for doing that back in the day. While he yeah. doesn't use it now, he'd have been all over it back in those days. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd like to think we would, although we were a particularly lazy bunch of bastards. But um, yeah, we were. There is, of course, when we do some re-recording and some uh, remixing of our old tracks to actually push, get get our now coloured vinyl LP uh, produced. Yeah, yeah. Now, we should be really limited because you don't have about uh, a possible sale of about five. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you never know. If we can build up a massive YouTube following, then uh, then we'll release the album. When we get to when we get to twenty followers, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll release the album. What cool. was your What was your last uh, your last guy? Yeah, uh, that's the last one. Is uh, I got was Geordie. Can you do it? All oh, right, right, yeah. Which got to number thirteen in. 1973 issued in June 1973 it's on the e- EMI label got a nice crisp uh, original e- EMI sleeve uh, uh, with it uh, as everybody knows Brian Johnson was 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 a singer for him uh, uh, back then and this is their f- follow up I uh, to all because of you yeah, 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 and it's. I post lots of my new vinyl on Instagram, and I just could not put the title of this song on there. It kept blocking it. All oh, right. I wonder why. <laughs> if if it's as do something rude, it's pretty lame. Ain't, ain't, ain't it? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it kept. I just could not. I, I had to post a record just calling it a song by Geordie, <laughs> which was no bizarre, but there you go. I um, don't know if I've still got them, <clears throat> and I probably haven't because I think, think they sold. But when I was selling a few things to make ends meet on eBay, mm-hmm. I, was sell- I sold, uh, I think it was three or four Geordie singles, including this one. And I think this was a promo. Uh, or the other one was a promo. One of them was a promo. Oh, but I, I, don't I tell me them. that. I sold them because um, I, on the on the back of ACDC, you know, Brian Johnson. Yeah. And I'll, I'll have a look through later and see if uh, they did go, because if they didn't go, they'll be in the pile in the cupboard. But I'll have a look and say. Yeah, if if you got the uh, promo, I'd, I'd be in- interested in uh, that. So uh, that's, that's uh, really it. What we... Well, we obviously can't do a. I suppose we can do a Spotify playlist. Yeah, yeah, things, I can put, can I can put a, a Spotify playlist d- together. Do a song, do a song off of your VLPs you've got. Do you no know, one song from each. Yeah, yeah. Of course, although I've got three copies of for my number four, uh, it's all the same song. 
not quite the same song for leader of a pack because the uh, contempo version is edited all right apparently how much, how much, much right? uh, well both sides are because on the other side of it is remember walking in the sand and it's cut out all of the seaside sounds and the seagulls all oh, right right so uh don't feel different cuts or or or, or no whatever but uh and i both went there went talking towards of different the cuts, same chart um, position i was uh in the car this evening and again just random spotify playlist and roll away the stone by mop the hooper came on mm-hmm. and yeah. i think it was the album version because it's the one that lindsey DePaul does the speaking on and does the brrr, when she says i will do um but i just realized how much different the guitar was to the single version i don't know if they re-recorded the single version it's the single version is much louder and you know just more glam yeah. and everything or what did, did they switch guitarists in between making the album and the single coming out and the i can't remember when aerial bender started i always but, um, remember one of my early albums i often i I had it for Christmas, Believe in Music. Yeah, yeah. I think it was that. Did that have All Right Now by Free? Yeah, it did, yeah. On it, because that's a totally different version, if I recall. Yeah, we've not, spoken about it before, isn't it? We it's, not it the, it's, it's not the full extended version. It's a, it's a different sounding version, sounds like a... Because that's what they used to do on those compilation album some songs i weren't particularly bothered if it's the, the original cut i just put anything on it as long as it was the band and and uh, the song yeah 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 but you'd be the expert because you're you're the, the 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 collector of those classic albums i have many many of those classic albums but i don't i'll be honest play that many of them uh, occasionally I including the Top of the Poppers. Yeah, you have loads of those. Yeah, those. But uh, I wonder how many people brought them in their pastures for the covers. But um, but uh, well, I I've, I've got a search on my eBay and it keeps popping up because I now got you one for for Christmas once with the calendar. And they keep popping up and another one came up today. Uh, buy it now for thirty four pound fifty. All right, I haven't brought one for ages. I'd say well, we didn't yeah. to go back to that shop we used to go. It's to a, the one the that has of the calendar, the poster. Oh right, 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 poster right. And calendar, not not just the top of the pop sale album. But um, I, yeah, I must get back into that again because uh, I haven't brought one of those for a long time. But I, no. I, was, I was actually starting to get a, a bit of a, a sort of a, m- a momentum going on that, and I'd quite. A, I've got quite a lot of them. I think there's, there was you about haven't put them on, onto your Discogs site yet. No, no, I was I was trying to find them all to be honest because they're all in throughout three different places. I know I've got you about eight. You had to protect them. I did indeed. I protected all my records at one point, but um, uh, uh, they were what do you call it? They I've, I've got about forty of them together, but I know I think they might be all I've got to be honest because there's only about eighty in total. I think. Yeah, okay, I'll have to have a look. But uh, anyway, that was our show on the vinyl. Blimey, if I only needed 40 for a collection, I'd be going mad to finish it. Yeah, I must actually look at that and see how many there are actually are and how many I've got. Um, apparently, <clears throat> from what that bloke in that shop in wherever it is, who I used to buy from for a pound each, told us that it's the... Uh, I see, yeah. <laughs> it's the later ones that cost a fortune because yeah. the early ones, everyone used to buy in tons because they were cheap and, you, you know, you got 12 of the latest hits but by the time the now albums came out and you and these sort of original artists albums no one was buying these anymore so getting hold of the last two or three is apparently a nightmare okay yeah you should still be able to get most of them for a pound or something i guess oh yeah yeah anyway as you take some mouthful of coffee that was our records that we brought recently good for good or bad um, yeah. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll put pictures yeah. of the records up uh, above the talking while we're talking about them. And uh, we'll see you next week for yeah. another show. Um, please like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please, I forgot please like this and everything because we need to know if you like it. So, yeah, we'll <clears> perhaps do some more. If you yeah. don't, then obviously we won't. 
but yeah but like follow and subscribe because it's only one click for you but it really helps in the algorithm because no one's going to even see this video exists if it doesn't get pushed by pushed up by the algorithm so uh, it would really help us if you like follow and subscribe yeah. and click the bell icon and thank you very much what's the uh what's the next show likely to be uh we'll probably end up doing another one on our records unless something happens in the week like someone dies or it's someone's birthday if we suddenly notice it's some famous rock star's birthday maybe we'll yeah. end up doing a show about and we missed the, the, the birthday the, the, was a well-known pop artist announced yesterday he died but i'm not sure we'll be doing a, a tribute show i'm uh, not to that one we won't know yeah. <laughs> but uh <clears throat> we missed Townsend's birthday because I know, we could have done the 30 Days on Who show. I mean, we could maybe even go back to that one at some point. But Who, but, that's something in my mind about I'm expecting something from the Who. I'm, I'm not sure what it is. I've just got it in the no, back of my mind. Anything big? I an album? About <laughs> 15 earlier. Mm. Yes, it's in the car now. I took it down last time. Oh, it's made it, put it to in the car, car there. Is it nice and hot in there? No, no, it's very cold in there, and I put it in the boot where it's shady. But the thing is that I um, I always forget it when I come to you. So now next time I come to you, it'll be on me. So just remind me 5.15 and it'll be in the car. Right, OK. All right, that's good. Sorry, listeners. I've just got to, to remind you. Yeah, I've, I've actually had it here for three weeks and I haven't taken it over to you. So you did, <laughs> you did need to remind me. So that was it. And thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye, listeners. Just a quick note. Um, Marcus has gone off to play his records. And just as we finished the show, it popped up on the screen that sadly, Tina Turner has passed away aged 83 in Zurich. So rest in peace, Tina. And we were deciding what to do for our next show. So it's been decided for us. The next show is going to be a tribute to Tina Turner her life, her music and her legacy. Thank you. See you then.